good way to sum up President Biden's windfall profits tax proposal. I thought the Wall Street Journal had it just about right. Energy for dummies. All right. Somebody who is certainly not, but joining us now, North Dakota Senator, the great Kevin Kramer. You know, Senator Kramer, I mean, you, that, the journals, we've, I've pounded it the last couple of days. There's no other way you can look at it. It is so bloody stupid. Uh, been tried before. So, sure, you tax something, you get less of it. That jacks up the price, increases the inflation rate, which Jay Powell clearly doesn't know what to do with anyway. So what's your take about mm. energy, energy policy for dummies? What do you make of that? Well, he certainly qualifies, and the two people standing next to him at his little announcement looked sillier than he did. I mean, here you have an energy secretary and a treasury secretary, somebody in Janet Yellen who actually must know better. I'm not sure about the energy secretary, but she must know better. Just standing there staring blankly while he utters this complete nonsense, while he drives down production, driving up the price. He then complains of, that companies are making too much profits and not spending them on reinvestment, when which he won't allow them to do. And then he's going to punish them with a windfall tax, which, of course, only adds to the price one more time. I don't think very many people are fooled by it, Larry. I don't know what he's trying to, to do. It was an obvious, I think, really uh, pathetic, desperate attempt to change the narrative going into the election. Um, but I, I just don't think people are buying it. You know, one little sub point here, Exxon. OK, so Exxon making a lot of money this year. Exxon lost $20 sure. billion dollars during the COVID year, $20 billion. So they're just getting back what mm -hmm. they gave up because of the shutdowns and COVID during the pandemic. So what, but, of course, Biden wouldn't right. give them that. Plus, he, intun he, he um, impugned their patriotism. We had Mike Summers on last yeah. night on the, uh, from the American Petroleum mm -hmm. Institute, right? I mean, yeah. oil companies, they're doing the best they can. If you say every day, I hate oil companies, they're going to shut you down. Well, guess what? They're not going to produce or invest. I mean, again, this is energy for dummies. That, that's exactly right. But it's also, even if you don't understand energy, if you just understand supply side economics a little bit, you'd understand that, you know, in, discouraging supply is, and increasing demand is going to bring up the price. And that if you discourage further production, that, that, that the, uh, you know, the companies will have less to do with their money. They can't reinvest it. You won't let them reinvest it. So it's all very peculiar. And, and like I said, I think it's desperate. Um, I'm not sure the president understands Economics 101, but certainly the Treasury Secretary should understand it. So, no, it's very frustrating. But throw on top of that, now they, they want to give a whole bunch of money mm. to, to, you know, to people so they can pay their rising heat costs this, this winter, which are going to be perhaps as much as 50 percent or more higher than last year because of their policies. And then they're going to put more money into it, which, of course, again, free money, oversupply of, of cash, just brings the price up even more. That's not to say people don't need the help. They're going to need the help, but they'd rather have lower prices. Yeah, well, we could always produce more. I mean, imagine that. We could there produce we could produce Wouldn't more oil, we could produce more home heating oil, we could produce more natural gas. That would bring down the price. You're right, it's Econ 101. Um, we had Senator Tom Cotton on your colleague uh, earlier in the show. And I asked him about, um, you know, coming out of the gate in early January, if the cavalry's coming to take over the House and the Senate. And um, he said, let's go with uh, taking the handcuffs off oil and gas production, which is becoming one of my favorite themes. Uh, Michael uh, Falkender, by the way, who was Assistant Treasury Secretary, started this on the show two weeks ago. Why not? It permeates every part of the economy. Every part. You know, we've been through the lists here, you know, from eyeglasses to pens to right. MRIs. Right. Every, everything people use is like 150 separate items that come from refined petroleum, uh, petrochemicals. Um, the prices have gone way up because of the shortages. Why not go right there uh, out of the gate for, um, you know, Republicans in the Senate? Let's take the handcuffs off of, uh, of uh, oil and gas production. Well, I'm all for that because you have the additional v benefit uh, when you bring down the cost of fuel of the cost of transportation, which which means everything else. <laughs> that, you know, even if it's not produced with petroleum products, it has to get to market with petroleum products. But we, it would be a heck of a fight. But it's a fight that we have to have. I actually think some people, some people, even on the left, would be relieved if they could blame Republicans for un, uh, for uh, taking the handcuffs off of the the energy sector for for a while. 
the problem is, is the energy sector needs long-term promises. As you know, these are big capital investments that need long-term returns. And um, in the attitude that comes from this administration isn't going to go away just because Republicans take control. Now, there may be a transactional Joe Biden somewhere in there, but we haven't seen him for the last couple of years. But I'm all for that, Larry. And, and remember, if we take the Senate, the one thing the Senate has is the power to obstruct. We have the power to say no yeah. on a lot of things, including the confirmation of nominees that include the judiciary as well as the executive branch. And I think we have to be prepared 100% to say no to everybody Joe Biden sends our way until we get some concessions mm. with regard to uh, to energy production in the United States. And at the end of the day, he'll look, he'll look heroic for letting us do it. That's interesting. Uh, tough. You're, gonna, you're ready to play hardball. I know it's premature. We haven't voted yet. The polls are just polls. They're not votes. But you've got to play some hardball. You think, can you make a sale, Senator Kramer? Let's get united. I, look, we have to cut spending. We have to cut taxes. We have to roll back regulations. Right. But it seems to me taking the handcuffs off oil and gas, handcuffs being your colleague John Hoban's great term, you know, starting there I think would be terrific. Can you, can, can you get the GOP uh, rallied around that one, sir? Well, we'll see how big the majority is if, if, in fact, we get the majority. The numbers do matter, obviously, and who, who the, is in that majority will matter. I know this, looking at the, the crop of new candidates, whether they're replacing Republicans like Dr. Oz, you know, replacing Pat Toomey or, or Herschel Walker, a, a new person replacing a Democrat, there's a good crop of new candidates. And if we get to 52, get to 53, knowing who these people are going to be, I think we're going to have a really strong freshman class that will be helpful to the rest of us that want to to, they want to play this this hardball, as you call it, because in a divided government, this is when transactions can take place, Larry. So, um, but you have to have some leverage, and I think we have to use our leverage, even if it's just in the legislative branch. I like that. No, no, I like the leverage. I like the appointments leverage. I like the ambassadorial leverage. Senator Kevin Kramer, thank you, sir. As always, appreciate it.